John Ryan. You've got to go see John Ryan. <laughs> Welcome to Cork, man. It's good to have you. What's up, guys? It's your boy Sam Chimes, and this is Artists Killing the Living Interview Sessions. Before I left Vancouver, Canada, my friend, my good friend, she said, Yo, you going to Ireland, my hometown? My hometown? You've got to see John Ryan, or else I'm going to kick your That's right. She, she said B. So, here we go, guys. John Ryan. Who is John Ryan? He tells his story, tells us something technical, and finalizes with a performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the man, the one and only, John Ryan. Sit back, kick back, and enjoy the show. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Sam Chimes. Welcome to another edition of Artists Killing the Living Interview Sessions. Nice. And this is the international edition. We're over here in Cork. Uh, some beautiful people, beautiful places. This place is cold. Yeah. It's cold right now. It's very windy, but people are warm and it's very homey. So right here we got John Ryan, but you go by... Stuck on repeat. Stuck on repeat. Yeah. Cool. So I got a few questions for you. I uh, sure. how did I meet you? It was through Karen. To Karen Murphy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, she introduced me to you. Amazing character, a mutual yeah. friend. I went to college with Karen, Karen, and then she's obviously doing film in Vancouver. How she met you, like, but yeah, it can be amazing how like uh, that's that's the major thing, man. Like that, let people connect to you, like, and, yeah. and stay connected with people. Because like that offers you so such possibilities, you know. Like we would never be hanging out and playing music together like this weekend if it wasn't for Karen. Like so, True. Karen, thank you very much. Appreciate yes. it. Like, <laughs> but it's amazing to think like how the connections can kind of bring people together. Like it's beautiful. Yeah. Like, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, are you from Cork? Oh yeah, originally born and raised here. Like, um, been playing music since I was a kid. Like. 14 really I started playing guitar nowadays I play I play something similar to you like so I do like live looping music like I make the beats on the fly the idea of it is to be to be able to accompany yourself to be able to make a DJ set without using a computer yeah. to take the old analog gear use the loop pedal to stitch it all together and kind of all bring it together at 14 I started playing guitar and I was into heavy metal like, I was a shredder like Kirk Hammett Joe Satriani Steve Vai like really into the kind of <laughs> just like how fast can I play this guitar yeah. it doesn't matter if people don't want to hear me do it <laughs> but it's like do you impress they're like no it's horrible man yeah. so i did that for years i played the I played shred and like metal bands and then eventually i started like slapping the acoustic guitar so like um, people like eric mongrain and michael hedges and andy mckee um, percussive guitar players that were like tapping using two hands to kind of play the guitar like a piano or like slapping the guitar to make like the drum sounds while you're playing mm -hmm. but essentially I was trying to like I was trying to develop some type of music that would enable me to accompany myself because like I was playing in bands from 14 to 20 21 and like nothing really sticking like they're getting very close to getting on a run and then kind of having to fall apart so I was like I just want to do this myself yeah. I want to be responsible for my own music and I want to be able to just make my own tunes so slapping the guitar to make the drum patterns on it uh, while playing was one way of doing that just like okay this is kind of like a band in a box type of situation yeah, yeah. and then when I discovered the loop pedal a couple of years ago and like it's just progressed that way then so I went from like slapping the guitar to make her like and recording that and then looping over it and slowly but surely into beatboxing and then beatboxing into drum machines yeah. and it's just like it's like um, it's just iterations man just like getting the sound gets more developed and more developed over time and that's really been my musical journey so far like just nice. uh, and like, I suppose just like just enjoying it for what it is like you know mm -hmm. and, like a play a time to play yeah you know so I got a question you're talking about uh, looping and whatnot what kind yeah. of equipment do you have yeah so I have um, so I have a boss RC 300 and okay. uh, that's like the three bank one um, I have a chaos pad so like um, basically I run the synthesizer I use a Novation Mini Nova that runs through the chaos pad the chaos pad has like four memory banks on it so it enables me to record four individual loops into the chaos pad uh, sample them resample them bounce them down to one track nice. manipulate it like because it has onboard effects and then I bounce that down to the loop pedal so by integrating the chaos pad I basically have seven loop banks at any one time beyond that then I have a voice life 2 which is a vocal harmony box mm -hmm. and then I have an assortment of kind of little stomp boxes so like I have like um, a boss me 70 I have a Canadian pedal called counter 5 which just makes like it's like cigarettes in a pedal like it's like Ooh. 
Ooh, shimmery <laughs> stuff. Sweet. And I have um, I have a bass synthesizer pedal, which is like a, an old Digitech one, which makes the kind of like um, the Daft Punk Discovery kind of wob wob kind of sounds like. So it's all just about like bringing things in, taking it out, seeing how it goes. And like new gear can like make you experiment in ways that you weren't possible prior to that. The evolution of the gear is is an is a iterative process in itself. It's much in the same way of like making the tune. You're like, oh, yeah. you put in, you're missing something. You put it in, and then a door is open. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, your music can change. Like, you have more possibility. Mm. It's almost like you're growing. And you get a new set of arms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. not that I know like about that. Four arms <laughs> yeah. with the strength also... of four. Arms. <laughs> yeah. So I got a, something that I'm sure a lot of people would be able to relate to by you answering this. Uh, but tell me of a time, have you had a time when you felt like stopping your music or something, whether it be your mind or some external energy source, uh, kind of started to make you feel like, yo, maybe I should not be doing music? Oh yeah, definitely, man. I think, ever, I think, I think most artists and most people who make art and musicians are not accepting of that. I think we all come through periods where we we question ourselves. Mm -hmm. We question. We question: Are we doing the right thing? Are we? Are we where we want to be? Um, and I think, like, I think uh, the negative response to that can get musicians down way more than than most people. Like, I think we all suffer from like an internal critic, like uh, the monologue we have inside our heads as musicians. And I'm sure it's the exact same with like with all artists, but it can be very, very harsh. And like, it's almost like operant conditioning in that regard. Then, like, so like once you kind of, if you've got the voice in your head going, "You're you suck, you're terrible," you know, you're never gonna make it you're never you, know, you should be better than you are right now yeah. and you're trying to play music while that is going through your head and you're like what can happen is you can kind of the why i mentioned operant conditioning is that you can actually just kind of internalize that and then as soon as you the next day when you go to play music you have that feeling in your head you're like oh i don't want to feel like this yeah. and I, that happens to a lot of artists that happens to me too like so like there's been loads of times where like i kind of get to a point where like i just can't do this like mm -hmm. and that makes you sad as well because like you like you, it must be the same for you that like music is your free you know it's your space to be like a friend of mine used to say to me when she used to see me play she uh, she spoke German I had learned a word recently and it applies when I look at you playing music it's a uh, gemutlichkeit and gemutlichkeit in Germany in German means like uh, like literal translation it means internal coziness but what it actually means is that like uh, gemutlichkeit is like the state of being when someone's totally connected to their environment that like they are just in their element that they are happy and they are they're happy they're not consciously observing themselves they are just like existing within the situation yeah. and the situation is perfect for what their soul is mm. um, and you and you can you can feel that in when, when you see like an amazing musician um, just doing their thing because they're not really conscious about it it's like when you get in flow you're not really thinking you're, you suck you're terrible because <laughs> in flow you're yeah. only you're you can just you feel something higher than yourself that you're like oh I'm not consciously fighting this I'm not over I'm not trying too hard mm. I'm just like you're in, just doing it you're, you're just, just doing it like just, you know. but it's all just about producing man and as you've got it right like you're literally you're playing every day you're saying okay I'm gonna go out and perform once a day regardless and like that's the most powerful thing you can do as a musician or you know a painter a videographer a dancer like all art is like you just have to you have to do it with regularity you have to do it every single day Absolutely. and always push yourself to, to try new things and then don't get worried about like I think the worst thing is like comparing ourselves to others like you look at another musician you're another band you're like oh they're doing way better than I am what am I doing wrong yeah. and then you feel bad about that and you're like you can't get bogged down on that you're just gonna have yeah. to recognize we're all on our own journey mm -hmm. and we all have priorities it's about knowing what your priorities are mm -hmm. bang out some tunes like this <laughs> that's the goal like you know yeah. and just and guide yourself towards that That was John Ryan, ladies and gentlemen, with his story, something technical, and with his performance. So glad you tuned in. I'm your boy Sam Chams, and this is Artists Killing a Living, Interview Sessions, International Edition. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>